Hi everyone and welcome to Inside Golf presented by Susquehanna Bank and Wealth Management. I'm Ellen Kaloje. Now for the past couple months here on Inside Golf, we've been highlighting spectacular golf courses in the greater Atlantic City area. Today we're going to be showing you 16 of those courses and what makes each one of them so unique and so memorable. All that plus our teed off segment that's coming up next on Inside Golf presented by Susquehanna Bank and Wealth Management. Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Bank. Susquehanna Bank, doing what counts. By PlayACGolf.com. Visit PlayACGolf.com to plan your Atlantic City golf getaway, where the play continues well into the night. By Club Champion, better fit, lower scores. Visit our Ballot Kenwood location. And by the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf. Defining a target? Realizing a dream. Susquehanna Bank can help you get your plans off the ground. Whether you're sending kids to college or doing something special for yourself. Susquehanna's financial advisors are worth talking to. We can help you find the smartest way to borrow money and save money in the process. Susquehanna Bank, doing what counts for dreamers like you. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Welcome back everyone to Inside Golf presented by Susquehanna Bank and Wealth Management. We start our tour of the shore with a look at eight different golf clubs. We're going to start south and then head north. Our first stop, Cape May National Golf Club. Cape May National Golf Club is located in one of the major fly zones uh, for predatory birds in North America. It's the most southern golf course in New Jersey. On one side of us is the Delaware Bay and the other side is the Atlantic Ocean so we get these uh, beautiful ocean breezes and we built Cape May National as the natural. That's what the sports writers coined us when we opened uh, the golf course. It changed a lot of perception of how golf courses were being built in those days because uh, there was a lot of railroad ties, a lot of hard pan, a lot of um, um, sculptured golf courses and we completely turned that around and we built what was the most natural golf course in America in its day. And we have a 50 acre bird sanctuary in the middle of the golf course and golfers come here they they get a feel of being in um, a, the great outdoors and being carved out of New Jersey, this really special place that has been called by magazines one of the top 10 natural locations, beautiful locations in New Jersey. Brad, give us a little history of Wildwood Golf Club. It goes back a little ways, doesn't it? It does. 1916 was uh, when the club was founded. Five individuals purchased this property, which was a farm, and then they commissioned Wayne Stiles in 1920 to begin designing what's basically the current layout, with a few exceptions, but uh, so really it's been around for a long time. It's a very challenging course, but it's a very player-friendly course. You won't go through a lot of golf balls here, but uh, it'll challenge you. It'll, it'll make you use every club in your bag. Somebody who found Wildwood Golf Club back in the 50s, a gentleman by the name of Arnold Palmer. And tell us a little bit of the history how Arnold Palmer and Wildwood Golf Club got together. Uh, Arnold was stationed here in Cape May at the Coast Guard uh, base. He was Coast Guard, as many people know. Yeah, he, uh, he really, he talks about Wildwood once in a while. Every once in a while, it'll come up. So um, uh, he, he really did uh, spend some time here that particular summer, and we uh, were proud of that. With 100 acres of sand here on the property, it's uh, aptly named Sand Barrens, uh, but it's, uh, it's not as bad as you think. It's all uh, mostly native sand and waste areas, which you are allowed to ground your club and, uh, and, and take some relief from the bunker, so it's not like uh, it's 100 acres of uh, penalizing bunker areas, I gotcha. but uh, it certainly makes for some aesthetic uh, views from the tees and certainly uh, interesting ways to play the golf course here. We like to pride ourselves on being different, and uh, the one thing about you know design of the golf course is one with uh, world-renowned architects, Dr. Michael Hertzen and Dana Fry, uh, two guys that are that are uh, industry leaders in building golf courses and designing golf courses. Uh, no expense was spared in the you know in, in the setup of the golf course. 
Shoregate is a very challenging, very exciting golf course. Uh, we rest on 245 acres of beautiful tree lined fairways. Uh, we have no houses around the golf course. Uh, you feel like when you enter Shoregate, you're entering a different world. It's a very dramatic golf course at the shore. Right, and there's not a flat green on the golf course either, is Not there? a flat green and frankly a lot of uh, undulation in the fairways for a short golf course. And every hole, nothing repetitive. Every hole, like you said, is an entity within itself by design and also location. And you never get tired of playing an 18-hole track like this. Uh, we find most people come back here and they have a lot of memories of a lot of different holes, which is uh, quite, quite a testament to the golf course. Lunchtime. Lunchtime. Lunchtime with Harry Bittner at Shoregate means maybe the best grilled hot dog at the Jersey Shore. The course was built in 1996. It is designed by Stephen Kay. As you can tell by this hole, number 13, this is a very typical Stephen Kay design. Uh, risk reward on most holes where there's bunkering in strategic places. Larger greens, larger fairways, but on the greens there's some tricky pin placement. So that adds to the character of the facility here and generally this is one of those courses where people love coming back time after time because it, it offers a different challenge each time they're here. Kay built the Harbor Pines layout through 520 acres of southern Jersey's pine forest, including 12 acres of water, most of which add to its beauty if not its challenge. It's a Parkland style facility, so it's been open for, we just celebrated our 15th year anniversary last year. Uh, Parkland style golf course, which means tree line, uh, tee to green. The course from the front tees plays only 5,000 yards. So for a novice golfer or somebody who may not feel quite, quite interested in their game or to the point where they feel very confident, they won't be intimidated by the front tees. If you stretch it back to the back tees here, it plays almost 7,000 yards. So from high handicapper to low handicapper, it's a very playable player-friendly course for everybody that can play. McCullough's Emerald Golf Links was built on a former landfill, making use of a hilly terrain to mimic conditions found overseas. Here on the 14th hole at McCullough's Emerald Golf Links, it, this is a design after the famed 14th hole at St. Andrews. Uh, much like our other holes, or our 17 other holes at McCullough's Emerald Golf Links, each hole is inspired by particular uh, European designs, uh, but these designs at McCullough's are uh, not exact replicas, they're, they're more inspiration, so uh, much like what Stephen Kay, our architect, did at, at the Architects Club in uh, Northern Jersey, he did here at McCullough's, but he did it with the actual designs of holes of other golf courses. Some of the other familiar inspired by names include Carnoustie, Turnbury, Royal Dornick, and Glen Eagle. As picturesque a golf course as you're going to find in America, folks, Twisted Dune. And how long has it been around, Scott? Uh, we opened in 2001, so what are we looking at, 11 years now? Just a baby. One thing about Twisted Dune, if you've played here or if you're going to, and we hope you do, they have great par threes here. Probably as strong a par three as you have in the in the area. I think. Three out of the four can play well over 200 yards. We have one short one, but it plays, you know, difficult with the big bunker on the left-hand side, but you're right, three out of four are very difficult par threes. The other thing I think of is Arizona and Scotland. Now, why would I think of those two places? Well, it's a link style golf course, right. and our owner uh, played a lot of golf in Scotland and Ireland and, and basically wanted to design a course just like those. As we mentioned earlier, the par threes here at Twisted Dune, Scott, are probably as, uh, well, entertaining, challenging, and pretty as you're going to get anywhere in the Philadelphia area. And here at number 16, it is a postcard waiting to happen. The ravine, 180, 90-yard shot over the ravine to, uh, once again, back to front sloping. Back game. to front, two-tier green, just a great par three. And again, there's no bailout here. You got a little approach area, front and left, as you can see, but uh, if you miss a short right, very difficult to hit out of that little hollow there. I'm joined by our host today, Charles Fay, Director of Operations. Thanks for having us, Charles. It's great to have you. Charles, I think there's one name, one family name, always has been and always will be associated with this historic club, and that is the Frazier family, and in particular, Leo Frazier. Give us a little bit of history, because here we are, we're in the Leo Frazier boardroom, which is right off the main lobby entrance at Atlantic City Country Club. Leo Frazier uh, is a great name to, to golf. Without him, uh, the PGA of America wouldn't be what it is today. And uh, as a PGA member myself, it's, uh, it's an honor to manage a club that uh, 
that he uh, helped establish. And if you look around this room, you see all kinds of memorabilia from his tenure there. Uh, but some great luminaries from the world of sports and entertainment also have been here and enjoyed everything, the rich tradition of Atlantic City Country Club. Well, here at Atlantic City Country Club, we're all about the history. And uh, we were established in 1897. The, we're the home of the birdie uh, that was coined in 1903. We've had six USGA major championships. Our, our course sits on an amazing plot of land. It sits right on the bay with the Lang City uh, skyline in the background. And it's just, uh, we keep it in tour-like condition. It's, it's just a really fun experience. At this moment, across the country, families are packing their bags for a getaway. And no matter where they end up, they'll all be home by dinner. Plan your own at PlayGolfAmerica.com. From finding fun and affordable programs to finding advice from PGA and LPGA professionals, PlayGolfAmerica.com has a way for you to get away. Visit today for details. PlayGolfAmerica.com, your link to the game. Welcome back everyone to Inside Golf presented by Susquehanna Bank and Wealth Management. We continue our part two of our tour of the shore with a look at eight more golf courses. This time we're going to be starting at Ballamore Golf Club and we'll be ending up at Scotland Run. It was by intention a private club for the first nine years that it was open. Uh, most people weren't even aware that we're here. So it's taken a little bit of time for us to get our, our name out there. Uh, but. Uh, we do have a lot of return business. Word of mouth is as good a, a form of advertising as I've ever found, and uh, that's mostly what we see here. People tell their other friends who are golfers that you know it was their first trip here and it's a must-play golf course. Uh, we did get the number three uh, best public course in South Jersey from Golf Magazine this year, and we're very pleased with that ranking. And I would say that uh, a lot of things go into the process for them to rank a golf course. But uh, just aesthetically, uh, this course is very appealing. And again, uh, it's very fair, wide fairways. There's no gimmick holes. Uh, what you see is what you get. Um, no mystery to it. It doesn't beat you up either. I mean, it, it's uh, usually a very, very pleasant place to be. It's very serene, as you can see. I mean, you look around, it's quiet. There's no traffic. Just a pleasant place to be. And uh, four and a half hours goes by very quickly here. We're the only nine-hole nine regulation length golf course. We, we've been here 10 years. We've done a, a tremendous amount of work fixing the course up. Uh, I think the word's gotten out that we're, you know, we're, we're really looking good here. And, and it's uh, cut out of the South Jersey Pine Barrens here. There's lots of pine trees here. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very walker-friendly course. A lot of people like to play nine holes. Uh, if they're here for, uh, for the summertime, uh, they have time to play golf and go to the beach, and go to the mall, or people who live around here can play after work or before. It, it's, 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 a, it's a course that, that all people can play. If you're the novice or the expert golfer, or, or e even just beginning, it's catered to everybody. Mays Landing Golf and Country Club was built in 1962 by a a group of local businessmen headed up by my, by my father, Leo Fraser, who, was, who went on to be president of the National PGA and was a president of the local Philadelphia PGA. He was the architect and he got a few friends together who had this idea that they wanted an, a nice public place where they could come and enjoy camaraderie, have some fun, and, and affordable for all types of people, men, women, children, and um, that's, that was our beginning and we're here today, some 50 years later. I believe that our that our guests that come here are treated like they as well as any place they can go, because service is what the the Fraser family has done in the golf business for a hundred years. And giving a little extra service, going that extra mile, isn't that difficult. We train our staff that way. That's that's our mantra here, and it'll continue to be that way. And it's been the the Fraser way for, as I said, probably a hundred years. At Seaview, we have 36 holes, two golf courses, um, the Bay Course right behind me, 
which is uh, obviously right on Reed's Bay here, and then the Pines Golf Course, which is directly behind the hotel. And it's great. I love having two different golf courses here. Guests can come, stay at the hotel, play the Pines Course, and then have a totally different experience when they come out and play the Bay Course as well. They love them both because they're so different in layouts. Uh, you really get two completely different feels. This one's a lot more traditional to this area. Uh, with the tree lines, it's a little bit more forgiving on, like I said, the approach shots with the larger greens, uh, but also much more challenging. Uh, it plays about four shots harder just because of the length and the trees and the well-placed bunkers. When you come to Seaview, uh, you know, not only are you getting two completely different layouts as we've talked about, um, but with Troon Golf's management here, you really get pristine playing conditions. And then also with the history built in, you're walking holes at some of the greatest players in the world and current players on our big course with the LPGA Tour play. So it really gives a unique feel to the players and something special for everyone. Well, Ron Jaworski Golf purchased Running Deer Golf Club in uh, September of 2008. And uh, ever since, we've been rapidly transforming the golf club to one of the, the best places to play in South Jersey. Ron Jaworski has been in the golf business for 20 years. Now, Ron is an excellent evaluator of football talent. And he also prides himself on realizing a course's best potential. The rolling hills of the golf course often make people think they're in North Carolina, uh, which is really great. You feel like you're in a different place. We have taken down thousands of trees, uh, making the course more fair to play on a daily basis. There is not a house, not a road on the golf course. Oftentimes you won't even see another foursome your entire round. So it's really a great secluded area to come play around the golf. Now this golf course opened up back in the 90s, right? Yep, opened uh, May 93. Okay, May of 93. So it has gone through, you know, there's been a, a whole change in terms of the demographics of golf, but the course itself, have there been many changes, Will, over the course of time here at Blue Heron? You know, obviously the one owner liked the fescue look, which was a pace of play issue. Ron identified some of those areas. We've knocked some of the fescue down. Pace of play is a big issue nowadays. Uh, you can get around this golf course in four hours, four hours and a half on a busy day. Right. So, Will, I know you're convenient. Tell everybody how close you are to like the Parkway and Atlantic City Expressway. Minutes, right? Yeah, we're, we're eight minutes off the Garden State Parkway exit 44. We're like three minutes off the Expressway coming back, back down to the shore. So we are convenient. But I know you get a lot of business. You tell me you have groups coming from New England down here for getaway, long weekends and all. You're convenient too. The Atlantic City Airport absolutely. is seconds away almost. Yeah, absolutely. Come on down and See Will Arby here at Blue Heron Pines. Who knows? Maybe you'll run into Ron Jaworski, old number seven as well. Our current owner, Joseph Mills, uh, took over the property in 1977, and he had the idea. He had the winery here. He built the hotel in 2001, and then in 2004, he, desi he decided to put the golf course out here, and Ed Sheeran designed the golf course through the vineyards that you see around us right now. You can spray the ball a little bit and get away with it off the tee. Where we get you is on the greens. In season, they run really fast around an 11 on the stint meter. Um, there's slope from back to front for the most part, but there are some undulations in the green. So you can walk away with a three putt on four or five holes here, and that's pretty usual. Hole number seven is our signature hole. It's a dog leg left from the tee box. You are surrounded by the vineyards here so it's a nice look especially if you're coming out here may through september the vineyards are fully grown in it's a great look we actually have a lot to offer here besides the championship golf course we have two great restaurants we've got a hotel on the property we also have a winery that runs wine tours and tastings daily the vineyard golf course at Renault is a unique attraction here in the atlantic city area and we hope that you come out enjoy it and if you do i guarantee you'll want to come back many times Scotland Run first opened in 1999. We have, uh, you know, award-winning golf course. We are top 50 golf world uh, for this year. Uh, we're four and a half star golf digest facility. The golf course itself is, is always in good shape. It's a very beautiful layout. It's got different features here than a lot of golf courses you're going to find. There's sand quarries you're forced to hit over. There's um, waste areas you're driving your cart through. There are uh, forest carries, blind shots, different things uphill shots, downhill shots that you're not used to in South Jersey that, that keeps people bring them, keep, keeps them coming back. Um, but we also have in the quarry here, there is a plane that uh, many of our patrons will play a fun game while they're waiting on the tee box as 
they may or may not have <laughs> throw money on, on, on the case, but what they'll do is they'll stand on the tee and they'll hit shots at the plane trying to see in the group who can actually hit the plane and, who, and who's lucky enough uh, to hit it usually gets the, the money or at least the pat on the back. But that's a fun game for most people that come and play um, and try to hit that plane while they're, while they're out here. Different, different feature. You don't see a plane usually too much on a golf course, so a lot of people come of and are attracted to that hole. We're not the greatest golfers, but we have a lot of fun. Thank you. That's absolutely right. How could you not have fun at one of those beautiful golf courses? And if you'd like more information on any of the courses, you can go to our website at InsideGolf.net, and there we have a special link to play AC Golf. You can enter a special contest to win a wonderful Atlantic City golf getaway. Coming up next on Inside Golf, it's time for Teed Off. Hi everyone, Ron Jaworski here. I just want to let you in on a little secret. Here, just outside of Atlantic City, you'll find some of the top-rated golf courses in the world. Imagine playing these championship courses during the day, then playing your hand at something else at night. Casinos, bars, clubs, shows. Atlantic City has something for all the ways you like to play. So pack your bags for the ultimate golf getaway. Do AC and play AC Golf. AC Golf, where the play continues well into the night. In a crowd of light beers, how long does it take to find the Yingling Light Lager? About that long. 99 calories, 100% authentic lager. Yingling Light Lager. Rethink your light beer. And now it's time for Teed Off, brought to you by Yingling, America's oldest brewery. I once interviewed Arnold Palmer years ago, and my father's a big fan, and he autographed it. Welcome back inside golf. Continues with Teed Off. We are at the Churchville Inn in Churchville, Bucks County, the home of the best baby back ribs in town and hundreds of craft beers. If that's what you're looking for, this is the place to be, the church fill in. Teed off panel today, Harry Mays is back from 97.5 The Fanatic, heard every weeknight at 10 till midnight. Joe Logan with MyPhillyGolf.com and Bob Shepard, golf instructor, also writes for PhillyBurbs.com and he even has a new book out We'll get to that a little bit later on, Chef, right. okay? I'll, I'll give you the plug, Chef. Very good. I'll Very give you good. the plug. Leroy Neiman right. was uh, the famed artist and passed away in the summer of 2012. Before he did, and it's believed, Joe, to be the last piece of art he did, an oversized golf ball. It was about three feet in diameter. Typical Neiman splash of colors, his signature on it. He passed away right after that. And they took and had both of the Ryder Cup teams, the Euros and the U.S., sign it put it on auction, and I think it brought in something like $26,000. And this thing's, like I say, oversized. Uh, that probably wouldn't have interested you, or would it? You know what, 26. Uh, <laughs> even if you had the money, though, would you be interested? Chump, chump change. You know, yeah. if I had a Lamborghini in the park driveway, maybe. Uh, I'm not a big collector of anything. Really? I never collected stamps, coins. Uh, I can't think of anything I would pay serious money for. Autographs? Nothing? Never been all. I mean, I've gotten autographs from people I was interviewing years and years ago, but I didn't pay for them. Okay. I wouldn't, you know, I gave, I, I once interviewed Arnold Palmer years ago, and my father's a big fan, and he autographed something for me, and I gave it to my father, and he loved that. You putting out 26 k for a oversized golf ball painted by Leroy Neiman, Harry? I love Leroy Neiman, but no, not 26000 not even 6000 But I'm not a big memorabilia guy either in, in any sport. Uh, however, there is there is something I would pay twenty six grand for if I had it. And? Tiger's old cell phone. <laughs> right. There you go. <laughs> bada bing, bada That's bada good. Bada. That's a good one. Oh I may need more money after that once I get the exactly. cell phone. I think you're going to need right. yeah. a little bit more. That's sort of a down payment. Uh, <laughs> a little storyline for another book. Huh? Yeah, that would be. <laughs> what happened go. to Tiger's cell phone, <laughs> right. Chip? Huh? I think it overheated and burned CSI up. CSI Orlando. Right. Exactly. <laughs> the mentalist. What about you? Were you, were you a collector? Yeah, you know what? I, I love collecting. Um, I, I'm not good at it. I'm not, I'm not well versed. I have some friends of mine that are really special in it. The thing, the vault at St. Andrews, if you ever get a chance to get in there, it is absolutely amazing. There is so many little trophies and things that no one's ever heard about. And when you look at them and you realize the dates on them and the history behind them, it's amazing. There's an event that happens when they elect or appoint a president at the RNA. He stands on the first tee and he hits the ball down the first fairway and all the commoners or the caddies or whatever you want to call the townspeople run after the ball and then whoever gets it brings it back and they give them a one pound note. 
and that ball is replicated in silver and hung on a chain and it's put in the vault at the RNA. Hmm. Very special. And that's the one that's always got my attention. I always said, you know what? That would be pretty cool to have all those golf balls. Hmm. I'm not sure if they're solid silver or coated and silver. I'm not sure it might even be whatever material it is, but I always thought that'd be about the coolest thing you could ever collect because there's obviously never going to be anybody can duplicate right, it. So right. the duplication of it, and I think that's invaluable. I don't think there's a value you could put on that, you know, you, just done. You know, you said you're not a collector, but how about, like, do you, your lowest round of golf, what was it? Uh, 70. Do you still have the scorecard? No. You, you know what I've you got? You didn't even I've keep got, that? Uh, uh, actually, uh, when my father died a few years ago, I inherited his, like, little shrine, a tournament he won, a scorecard with his hole-in-one on it. I've got those. I don't have any of that stuff from me. I do have, I got a hole-in-one once. I've still got the ball, right. but it's not... It's you not know, in it's a, a plaque paper. or no, anything not like that. that. No. I don't like have the ball. <laughs> you no. had a hole in North one. North Hills number three. <laughs> oh. Lost the, lost the ball about four holes later. Uh, yeah, and it's going, going, gone. Probably <laughs> had a bounce on number <laughs> right. four. Yeah, it might have been. <laughs> How about you, Chef? <laughs> anything, anything from your vast career in golf dating back to whenever. Did you, did you ever keep anything? Yeah, I have a driver. It, it's called Blondie or, the, or Big White, they used to call it. Persimmon Nicknamed driver? It. Persimmon mm -hmm. driver that... It treated me pretty well. I, I was the pro at Sandy Run for many, many years, and I did most of my competitive playing while I was there. And I, I drove a lot of the greens there. And there's one club that I drove. Drove the greens. Listen the to the this first, side. the fourth. With a persimmon well, driver. The sixth, the oh, seventh, the ninth. Boy. And I drove 13, which you can't do today, but I did it in those days. Almost got on 16, and I've driven 18. So with that driver, because I've hit so many greens, I got that stuck away in the corner. And to me, it means something. It Absolutely. may not be worthless to anybody else. But mm. I want to thank Joe Logan. Harry Mays, Mr. Persimmon himself, <laughs> Bob Shepard. The book is called, If They Hadn't Invented Golf, We Never Would Have Needed the Damn Whiskey. And our <laughs> thanks to the folks here at the beautiful Churchville Inn. Pay them a visit. We'll be back. Inside Golf continues in just a moment. The Churchville Inn is one of Bucks County's most unique dining experiences. There's history, an assortment of great food featuring the best baby back ribs anywhere, a varied selection of craft beers, the Churchville Inn, where good friends and a great meal come together every time. Early mornings, late nights, and way too many takeout dinners. Running a business takes energy, determination, and sacrifice. And whether you're a startup, well-established, or somewhere in between, the people of Susquehanna Bank have the knowledge to help you succeed. From cash management solutions to the benefits of local loan decisions, we help keep your business moving ahead. Susquehanna Bank, doing what counts for businesses like yours. Member FDIC. Well, that'll do it for this edition of Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Bank and Wealth Management. I'm Ellen Kaloje. Now, you want to check out our website on InsideGolf.net. There you can check out past episodes that you might have missed. You also want to check out our upcoming schedule, which includes Harry Donahue heading to Cancun, Mexico. He'll show us two magnificent Ibero Star golf courses. You won't want to miss that. And as Harry always says, no matter how bad it's going, don't pick up. We'll see you next week. Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Bank. Susquehanna Bank, doing what counts. By PlayACGolf.com. Visit PlayACGolf.com to plan your Atlantic City golf getaway, where the play continues well into the night. By Club Champion, better fit, lower scores. Visit our Ballot Kenwood location. And by the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf.